Hey people, what's up? K Hart here. So today I want to show my process of how I go about making like chill, emotional R&B type beats. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. And if you enjoy, please remember like, subscribe, share. Very, very much appreciated as I try to grow my channel. And let's hop right in. So I'm starting off at 82 BPM with this one, which is a little on the slow side. Uh, what I'd like to do is do a slower tempo, um, just in terms of recording melodies and stuff. And um, then I'll kind of double time the drums so it seems like it's a faster BPM than it actually is. And when I get to the drums, I will show you what I mean. And let me play this through so you see how it sounds and I'll kind of explain the chord progression. So basically we're starting off with just a G major seven chord and then dropping down to this is an F sharp minor sus four which sounds kind of scary but basically it's an F sharp minor chord and we take the third and move it up to the fourth in the scale so that makes it a suspended chord so it's a sus four since it's on the fourth gives it some nice tension then we come back to the G major seven twice here the regular F sharp minor seven. And then this one is the interesting chord in this progression because it's not actually in the key of D major. This is an A minor seven. And usually in the D major scale, you have A major as your um, five in your chord progressions. So it sounds like that, which in this context doesn't sound that good. This is called borrowing from the parallel key. So that would be D minor. So anything that starts on the same root note, so D major, D minor, A major, A minor, that's your parallel key. And you can borrow chords. So basically if something is a major, you can borrow a minor chord or vice versa and make your chord progressions just a little more interesting because it's not something that the listener is always going to expect. And this A minor seven has a really nice leading tone into that G major seven to start the progression again. And then I knew I wanted to layer that electric piano with kind of a regular grand piano sound. So I grabbed this um, noir preset, the jazzy preset. So basically I just replayed this a second time. So it's the same chords. Um, I just changed it a little bit. I added some filler notes, arpeggiated some of these. So it sounds a little bit different and it just makes it feel a little more human having the two parts be, you know, slightly different than just copy pasting the same thing and changing the instrument. And the processing for both of these is basically the same. I have just an EQ cutting off some of the lows and damping some of the higher frequencies. I have a slight amount of compression just to help it punch through a little more. They're both side chain to my kick. And then I have that Valhalla Vintage Verb put right on the channel. And I like to do that a lot of times with my keys just to make them a little more ambient and it helps them sustain a little bit better than putting it on a send. And I also do have some group processing on this as well. So I just have a little bit of glue compression from the glue compressor and I'm using that tape mellify to make it sound a little more vintage. Okay, next I layered those chords one more time with this bell. So basically I just took those chords from the electric piano and shortened them. We're just getting that nice initial transient hit when the chord hits and I didn't really want any extra sustain muddying things up. Some EQ, cutting out some of those mid frequencies. Uh, side chain to my kick once again. I have Echo Boy on here to give it a little bit of rhythm. And then that same Valhalla vintage verb as the pianos. The next thing I did was grab some vocal chops, and this is actually from a free Cymatics pack. I basically um, consolidated this so it's all one big piece now, but this is just one chop that I took. So this is it going forwards, and then I reversed it, and it's backwards here. But this is what it sounds like without any processing. Sounds kind of weird and awkward without the processing. So basically I added a little bit of saturation uh, that um, EQ to just cut off a lot of those highs and the lows. So it's just kind of like a telephone effect almost. And then this reverb to really help it um, flow a little bit better. So if I play it now with all of those on there. And 
And then to finish off the melodic stuff, I grabbed this Glocken preset. And I just made a really simple um, short melody here. And that's basically um, playing kind of counter melody to the vocals. And processing on these is pretty much the same as those other bells. Next, I just went ahead and added this simple sub bass line. Um, it's not following the root notes if I grab the electric piano chords here. So it's not just playing the root notes. What I like to do with my bass a lot of times is follow along with the chords and play notes in the chord that maybe I want to emphasize a little bit more. And I also like to play notes that maybe are not in the chord that's being played and it can add a little bit of tension. So if I play just these two tracks together, you can hear how these two lines are kind of interplaying with each other. So starting with the drums, I just made a really simple kick pattern. I really just wanted to give the rest of the drums uh, space to breathe. So for this one, I have a snap on every two and four. And this is kind of what I meant when I was talking about double timing my drums. So since this is at such a slow BPM, it's at 82, I wanted to make it feel a little faster and kind of pick up the tempo a little bit. And so basically, instead of putting it on the three of every measure, which you normally see in like faster songs like Trap or Trap Soul, stuff like that, I'm putting it on the two and four to almost double this BPM. My hi-hats I kept pretty simple. So I have just a regular two-step pattern down here and some open hats kind of in these spaces that I created and a few rolls to make it a little bit more interesting. And if you're like me and you pencil in your hi-hats, definitely, definitely, definitely open up this velocity section down here. And all of these lighter notes are very low velocity. All of the darker notes are higher velocity. So just make sure that you're randomizing this a little bit to make sure it doesn't seem like a robot is playing these. So the last thing I added were these percussion hits. So just super reverby in the background. So let me go ahead and arrange this and I'll play the final beat for you guys. So I'm starting off with just the piano and that percussion down here. And then as a riser to go into the main chorus, I took the last chord of this piano and reversed it. And that drops us right into the chorus with everything playing. 